C could you say that again for me, Robin? The jizz, the jizz music. The jizz music. <laughs> yeah, the cantina, the song in the cantina. It's jizz. Oh, is that what it's called? Really? It's yeah. The the genre of music is j uh, jizz music. Oh, oh, that's just just disgusting. So yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure, sure. We can do that. We can do that. God, that's disgusting. Uh, oh. Like, hey, we're going to listen to the jizz. No, I'm not. <laughs> hey, hey, Ryoku. Yes? Hey, did you want me to introduce you into this episode? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, sure. I, I, I'm not fussed, Okay. So. No, 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 no. Like, I, I know that you... Oh, sorry, I'm talking super loud. My bad. I, I, I know that you... Because I'm excited because we're talking about Star Wars because we've never I fucking mean, talked said, about... I don't know a massive amount of Star Wars, but it's like that little thing that you mentioned to you. Yeah, I knew, I knew that. <laughs> so... Oh, okay, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, I'll, I'll go basically, ahead. Basically, anything past, like, episode five, don't don't ask me because I honestly don't fucking know. So, <laughs> so... All right, cool, cool, cool. We'll go ahead and do that. And since I'm in a good mood and uh, I'm actually excited about the subject matter because guess what? We've never actually talked about Star Wars before, uh, and that's a lie. I'm, I'm telling deliberately a lie, so you know, don't don't believe don't believe anything I'm actually saying. Where's the feedback coming from? Uh, that was from me. I don't know what it was from though. Ow, now brown cow. I'm a pretty girl. I'm a Barbie I'm getting girl. I'm getting feedback on mute. Hang on, this is weird. I'm a Barbie girl in, in a Barbie, Barbie world. world. Uh, it's, like it's, uh, it's, it's fantastic. fantastic. All right. <laughs> it's, 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 shit. I, I, you know. My hair and dress me everywhere. <laughs> something, something. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Come on, Barty. Let's go party. Uh, uh, uh. Did I say Barty? God damn it. <laughs> I love you. Of that song. It's you great. Love There's a. Oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. There's. Happy family. <laughs> Okay, okay, R R Riley, no, God, stop, uh, 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 you were supposed to, uh, God, you know, that was a show I hated when I was a kid, it was, cause it's like, you, you know life is not like this, I like, I Barney much longer than I should, I was into Barney until I was like 13, don't be mean to Barney, which was like, what, 13? Which was like, what, like five days ago? ago? Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> All right, sorry, we stepped on each other's joke. All right, hey, hey. Uh, I think you meant five years ago. Hey, uh, uh, Mo Fist for, like, having the same sort of type of joke, just different time frame, Robin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there was a gay Bobby song, by the way. I, I, I just assumed the original version was gay. And, you know, I didn't no, know that there was, like, you know, uh, and, and there, so there is an even gayer version oh, yes. it's about like these, quite it's literally like, gay hi, hi Rahul you want to go for a ride on what on this Bobby is a bitch she is just a witch <laughs> oh, all right, all right, all right, all right, okay why does Ken date her Ken is such we're, a we're man going, we're going to talk about Star Wars cancel just to oh, do okay. him we just want to screw him uh, <laughs> oh, oh god so oh okay <laughs> all right all right all right so so, uh, welcome. Them Ken what? dolls, man. Visually appealing. Oh, okay, alright. Let, let, let's just do the goddamn intro before I hang myself. <laughs> welcome, everyone, to the MoCast. I'm your host, Mo Diggity. Joining me today is the lovely, the awesome, the funny Ryoku Ma Moru, as she spelled in my fucking Discord, because everyone in my Discord has Mo in its name, and I can't tag anyone. W with any with any kind of like competency or like uh, ability, it's like Yato. I'm looking at Yato, my buddy Yato. He hasn't been moified yet. I I, I hope to God because there's just like alpaca mo kumodu dragon, uh, mo click motanic kitten like the the shroomy mo 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 mo. And there's like there's like two people, one moderator and my admin, who's basically named almost exactly like me. And my goddamn admin administrator fucking did this on purpose, just so he can make it deliberately. Wait, what did you say wasn't Mo yet? Uh, uh, Yato. Shut no, 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 no! Oh, damn it! <laughs> Wait, you mean Yatmo? He, yeah, Yatmo. Goddamn! I hate everything about everything and everyone. 
Also, my co-host, <laughs> Riley. Say hi, Riley. Hi, Mo. How you doing? And the the awesome, the super duper, the greatest co-host, which is a lie, uh, which, you know... I was going to say, wow, that's... No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm playing. No, no, that's no. That's preferential. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. No, that's... Uh, here, here's Robin. I was about to have to fight for my honor. We were about my to have favorite to have child. To <laughs> uh, then again, are you the one that said? Wait, wait, did, did you? Did you? Or were you the one that uh, changed Yato to Yatmo? <laughs> of course, no. I what? Fucking was. Okay, it wasn't me. Oh, okay, okay. Because <laughs> I was going to cast you in the fucking pit of unforgiveness, Bharti's. Anyway, <laughs> and I, I of course am Mo, and uh, we're talking about Star Wars today because. Riley hasn't actually seen any of the fucking Star Wars movies, so we got him going on four, five, and six, uh, which is, of course, A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. So, so wait, Mo, are you saying that we're having a trilogy of Mo cast episodes about Star Wars? <laughs> no, only a duology because Mo won't watch the Disney movies. <laughs> Oh, oh, shit. I, I guess the joke flew over my head like a lead fucking balloon. Uh, <laughs> because I thought that you were, like, saying, are, are we going to be doing a a, 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 three piece, a, a, a three-piece a uh, three set of MoCast episodes of episodes four, five, and six? But I'm also kind of baked. So, uh, yeah, so some jokes just <laughs> aren't going to... <laughs> Well, because we got to do the prequels and sequels. <laughs> oh God, do we have to do the sequels? Yes. Yeah, I, mean, I just want to measure. I just want to take fucking sledgehammers to everything around me when I think of the goddamn sequels. Oh, oh hey, well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Look at it this way: my friend Ian will come after you because if we don't do the sequels here, I'm gonna do them on the Riley and Ian movie review podcast, and Ian will be very upset. God Almighty. <laughs> <sighs> All right, all right, fine. We'll, we'll do the goddamn sequels, I guess. Dun, 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 dun. Well, I will have nothing to add to this conversation because of all I've seen of the sequels are the trailers, and I don't. Well, I mean today, I mean else. today we're only talking about the original trilogy. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. I actually know those were okay, so it's like you know whatever. So. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, Riley. So you want to hear my take? Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause cause Yes, I, I'm, I'm actually getting to you, you fucking impatient Paul. Anyway, me, 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 me. Anyway, I was just, uh, yeah, so Riley, go ahead and give us your hot take. Uh, like, yeah, what, what, did you, what did you think of uh, A New Hope? What did you, you know, and just like give us a little brief rundown of what you thought of characters and all that, who popped out for you or who, um, who you liked, blah, 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 blah. Are we going to do that? Oh yeah, we're we're going to start with the new each movie. Okay. Y yes. So a new hope was um. It was good. It was good. I. Um, you, you sound not con unconvinced. <laughs> a feeling. At least the first time I've watched anything Star Wars related, besides like I watched one episode of Star Wars: The Clone Wars as a child, and I said this is stupid, and that's why I've never watched anything Star Wars since. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, I still I watched A New Hope, and this feeling holds true. Later, is that I don't understand what all the fuss was about. I mean, it's a good movie, but it does not seem to be worth the billions and billions of dollars and billions and billions of fans it has. It's only like a good movie. It's not a great movie. Really. Like what? What? Yeah. What? Why doesn't it make a make it into the a great movie category for you? Because it just it doesn't wow me in any way. It's just oh, it's a space. They go to space. They do a thing in space. There's light in swords. In all honesty, I kind of agree. <laughs> and the lightsaber fights, this holds true. But in this movie too, they just kind of seem like slow, and the choreography isn't done great. It's like they've just been like thrown in there, haven't they? Like, it's just kind of like... I just, like, look at them as they swing their swords around, and they're not even, like... There's not even any, like, agility or choreography behind it. They're just kind of, like, rubbing their swords against each other, like... <laughs> <laughs> See, like, you're making me cry inside here. 
because I'm like, you don't, you don't really need, I mean, like, Obi-Wan's so old, though. I mean, how can he, I mean, is Shane, you know, like, in Shane's Earl Joan voice bot, you know, they're, they're like, they're, 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 they're fighting swords. I mean, you make it sound like it's totally lame. But anyway, go, go, go ahead, go ahead. Please shatter, <laughs> shatter my childhood some more and make me cry inside. Oh, my childhood's already dead and buried, so go ahead. <laughs> like, not to get any specific thoughts for the other movies, but I think, like, the only good choreographed lightsaber fight out of, like, all of these movies is the last one. Well, yeah, the... yeah, because I, I, honest to God, like, I was just, I'm just kind of joking a little bit. Like, yeah, you're, you're totally right. The choreography is kind of bad because they didn't oh, have yeah. shit. They didn't have shit for a budget. I mean, really? Here's a little factoid. The studio had no faith in the very first Star Wars movie. Uh, they, they didn't think that it was going to make it past the opening night and all that shit. And uh, they thought that the, that the movie was kind of stupid. And so they just sort of wrote it off as a potential loss. And, uh, well, to their, to their uh, surprise, of course, it was a huge hit. But they didn't give it a budget worth a damn. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that, that's that's why you kind of have this very lackluster uh, 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 choreography and all that. But it, it turns out it's it's kind of a part of its charm, and uh, I, I think that I wouldn't have it any other way, because if you after especially after so long, uh, if you put like real actual choreography uh, to that part, say like the very first uh, lightsaber battle. Like, uh, I, I don't think it would work at all because you, you do sort of look at Obi-Wan Kenobi and honestly, even though yada yada the force, it would be kind of goofy to see him doing the stuff that he, that he, uh, bleh. It, it, it's kind of goofy, I think, to see him do the stuff that he was capable of doing when he was just General Kenobi in the Clone Wars. I also think he's, it's very stupid that he just lets himself get killed. Well, th there's there there is a point to that though. It's it's all very uh, Buddhist and, and very Zen and very destiny. That, yeah. That's, uh, that, that's the whole point was that if he he knew that if if Vader slayed him, that it would empower Luke in the future to defeat him. Like it was a back and forth kind of thing. And I was like, my my death will give you the power. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, he and he was also like you would never know this beforehand, but he was also trained uh, to become sort of like one with the Force because Qui Gon, uh, his master Qui Gon Jinn, uh, uh, taught Yoda and Yoda taught uh, 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 Obi Wan. So uh, so anyway, so, sorry, Riley, we're totally stepping on your uh, your time to speak. So anyway, I will uh, tell you. Terrible the choreography. Best part about this movie. <laughs> the best part about this movie. Han Solo, the best character. Of course, the of only course. character. <laughs> the best one. Just so good. I like watching Han Solo. Did I you just like want the Han so you... Solo forever and that's it? Okay, don't get gay, Sparky. Don't get gay. All right. I, I know that he, you know, he's a, you know, hot, Harrison Ford is pretty fucking hot shit, especially back in his day. But you know, chill, chill. I think besides, I think he's banging the Wookie. Anyway, uh, Whoa. so, no, no, no. Uh, actually, what, what, what did you think of Chewbacca, his, uh, his little companion? He's cool, I guess. I mean, like, it's hard for me to get invested into a character that doesn't talk. And that holds true with Chewbacca. He talks. He's, he's just cool, goes, I guess. He doesn't talk in a way that I can understand. Well, you're that... supposed to let the theater of the mind, like, sort of go, you know? Yeah, but I'm a kid, so. Yeah, well, so you didn't like. So you... Wait, so you don't like R2 at all either? Uh, no, because there's certain. Ca Sometimes a character can, like, have charm beyond. And Chewbacca didn't really do that for me, but R2 did. I really enjoyed R2. It's just because he beeps. He beeps and shit. <laughs> might, you you can't get mad at, like, beeps. a happy, chirpy beep. Yeah. <laughs> and now, now, I think, I don't know if, Mo, you've listened to an episode of the Riley Movie Review podcast before. Uh, yeah. There's a, 
there's a long standing tradition where anytime I talk about a movie, nine times out of ten, I have to get super horny over the female lead. And that will hold true in Star Wars. Well, yeah, of course, it's Carrie freaking Fisher. <laughs> Did Carrie you know? Fisher. Hold on a sec. Did you know that uh, standards and practices back in the 70s was so, like, uh, 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 you know, like, it, it, it's so tight, like a dolphin's butthole. I mean, like, just water fucking tight, right? <laughs> that they looked at Princess Do you Leia. Do it's a dolphin butthole smoke? No, 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 no. That, that's not that's not the episode. That's not the subject of the podcast. Okay. Okay. Just don't, don't worry episode, about that. Next Mo's episode. Moe's dolphin sex story. Anyway, anyway, no. Uh, but no, uh, they were so fucking uptight about uh Carrie Fisher's boobage because she had some like fairly impressive jugs on her, right? They're, they, they're out there, Mo. They're out there. Are they out there? Are they're, they? I, I, Someone I've heard, says it. Yeah, I'll I'll believe that when I see that, and I I know I will. But apparently, her breasts were, uh, quote unquote, too big for the movie screen, so they uh they uh, said that they had to be taped down, right? And so Carrie Fisher just allowed the staff to do like a freaking money po- uh, poll, sort of like a betting uh, process of who gets to win the honor of taping down her boobs, because Carrie what? Fisher. Because Carrie Fisher loved the cock, and that I'm not saying that I'm not slut shaming Carrie Fisher. I'm saying that's what she liked. She liked banging fans, and she was like, you know, she she loved the the sex because, well, of course, she's from the fucking sixties, and it's the middle of the goddamn seventies for Christ's sake. So yeah, man, she uh uh uh, uh, uh Leia, Carrie Fisher w- w- slew dick up and down the fucking West Coast. When the fucking uh, 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 Star Wars movie uh, premiered, man. Well, fuck allegedly, the allegedly, build the time machine. Oh, bitch, me first. That's that's what I want. <laughs> I will fight you. I will elbow you in the goddamn <laughs> face. No, anyway, 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 anyway. We can uh, go together, Mo. Strangely well, just... enough, uh, uh, like this is completely off subject, but uh, another victim of like a uh, uh, oppressive standards and practices, fucking uh, 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 bullshit was the original bat the 60s batman show they said that dick grayson's pa- all right so the dude who plays dick grayson you know robin uh had yeah oh a- yeah i know apparently <laughs> has a pretty big cock and so they they <laughs> okay. did so the uh, there was a few episodes where it's like holy sheep shit batman uh and, and like his 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 package it's just very, very pronounced, right? Like you can see in the fucking like it's the sixty spandex that he's wearing. So they demanded that he start taping and tucking his stuff uh, to the point where it would be quote unquote uh, uh, standards S and P uh, 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 acceptable, you know, seventies acceptable. And so like yeah, 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 uh, fucking the dude who played Dick Grayson uh, had to freaking tape his shit in. And uh, Carrie Fisher had to have her titties uh, fucking taped every goddamn show and or uh, uh, every it, time viewing. Did they do it in fucking? Did they do it? Return of the Jedi? Did they tape her tits down then? Uh, pfft, I don't know. Who knows? So think, I will like Return of the Jedi. When they have like all the fan service in the world with her in that fucking slave outfit, they wouldn't oh, be taking. Oh yeah, shit yeah, that's a good point. Well, I'm, I'm pretty. Yeah, yeah, you got a good point. But uh, by that, by that time, like a. Uh, they had such a huge budget, and it was the '80s, so I think they unclenched a little bit, and like now. And, and she was just so loved at that point. I don't think like, you know, like the stringent uh, like policies and shit, like the FCC or whoever whoever the fuck is in charge of that guideline bullshit. They were just like, yeah, whatever. Just Carrie Fisher, go for it. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. I mean, at, at that point, the studios were just able to buy some goodwill, and and just just probably just threw some money at S and P to shut them the hell up. But anyway, uh, so let's talk about the uh, the, the 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 fucking uh, uh, trench run in the ver- at the the ending the the big set- the big setup the whole uh, empire versus fucking rebels like the whole point of the movie the, my I think it's my favorite last act in any movie. Uh, and then again, it's also my favorite trope. Like I I love the the big uh, thirty minute freaking. Uh, uh, 
all the good guys versus all the bad guys type battles in movies. And this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, how does it stack up to Riley's standards? To Riley, you, your standards. Sorry, you're going to have to repeat the question. The trench run, you know, where Luke blows up the Death Star. Oh, yes, okay. Um, it was cool, I guess. I've never been super into fucking spaceship fights, but it was cool. Oh, my God, the, the whole, like, use the Force and he shuts off his fucking radar is so stupid. <laughs> I don't think it's stupid at all. Like, it, it's, it, it actually makes it, it makes perfect sense because he's a Jedi. And so, yeah, I, but, I mean... He it's could like, use the force while also using the radar, right? He didn't have to dramatically close the radar. <laughs> well, yeah, but it doesn't look. But it looks kind of stupid. Like you're cheating. He's like, use the force, Luke. Okay, I'm just gonna have my technology on just in case. I mean, like, it's. I don't know. Maybe if he closed well, his eyes, it would be a better effect. Hold, hold on, Rio. Uh, 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 oh, I'm sorry, Robin. What? Oh, I said maybe if he like closed his eyes or something right before he shot, it would have like a better effect. You know, like you I, I don't know. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> I think so. Like, cause I I don't I don't know like if I would believe that or like I would think I would think to myself this isn't safe like don't close your eyes while flying a ship. <laughs> yeah, but that would more accurately show the power of the force. You know what I mean? Oh well, yeah, I, I I could see that definitely. I I could definitely. If he's like see what watching he's the about. radar and then the number's going down to like ten thousand, nine thousand, and then you hear like use the force, Luke, and then like as it's at like three thousand, he just shuts his eyes and like waits and presses it. Like that'd be I'd like that. That'd be cool. Well, yeah. Well, shutting, all... shutting the radar down at twenty thousand seemed a little dangerous. <laughs> well, yeah, true, 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 and, and I, I can understand. You know what I don't understand is why no one in in the Rebel Command uh, did j just start flipping shit. Like, no, no, you, you put your shit on right now, you you fucking space hippie, and you fucking use the technology that we have. Ugh. You know, I, well, I, yeah, they go. They go. What happened to your computer, Luke? Like, oh, goes, nothing. It's, it's fine. Don't worry about it, bro. I got it. That, uh, he hand waved it away, and no one said a fucking thing after that. that that's the part that did uh, 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 that did bother me. Anyway, yeah, so. it's here's here's my least favorite part about about the first <laughs> movie about A New Hope is the fucking last scene. Oh my god, the slowest scene of all time where they like put the medals on all of them and like it's super quiet and no one's making any noise except for Chewbacca like giving out one howl. See, I, that's that's my favorite scene. That's one of my favorite oh my endings. God. I'm sorry. It's like cuz they didn't need to talk. You know what what they needed to do was just have, you know, the three uh, like it, it 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 really did mean something to me as a kid because I totally got it. Like it's such a you know and, and growing up and like seeing how they did that, uh, th they did that scene. Like it it's poignant. It it it's like I get it. Then again, I don't know. Maybe I've George... just seen it enough times in the Star Wars universe because that's the same ending to like you know Knights of the Old Republic, the game, and like to like three other Star Wars games. It's yeah, the same ending. They know? they really do love to reuse their their shit over and over again. It's also because George Lucas and everyone who wrote the movie was like a colossal hippie. And the 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 uh, if you really think about it, it it's the old uh, you know we used to have spirituality and incense and peppermints blah 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 uh, before technology stupid stinky technology arrived, and so this is kind of that, and it's also at least in my opinion, it's a retelling of the colonial Brit the colonial and British war, because uh, the the bad guys are British obviously the Empire. And the rebels are obviously the colonists, the, uh, the the colonies in old school, old America, and this this feels sort of like a retelling of, of, of that that conflict, but just set in the space, and with Death Stars and shit that could blow up planets. But anyway, uh, so yeah. so you, you weren't really uh, uh, so Riley, you weren't really too, uh, I guess, blown away by the 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 trench run. Because that's I, I don't know like there's there's just like so much action and so much stuff going on like did you did you feel any tension or anything when uh, Darth Vader and his two guys were uh, blowing up uh, the fucking rebel pilots one by one going toward the uh, the center? 
I mean, most of the rebel pilots had not done anything to make me care about them at that point, so I was just like, oh, shit. Well, do they need to take you out and to dinner and blow you or something? Like, no, you, <laughs> they, they, they're supposed to be, like... They have to have a character for me to care when they die. But you're supposed no, to care about them retroactively, like, oh, Fatty Magoo, I could have gotten into his stuff, but now he's fucking dead. Or <laughs> yeah, how about... I mean, I had a reaction. I was like, oh, shit. Like, you're supposed to... Sorry they didn't open up their wallet and go, oh, my son, I'll get back to him soon. <laughs> <laughs> My poor pregnant wife. Like, what, oh. what do you want them to do? They should have been characters. Like, they should have interacted with They are the characters! Now, what about, what about when your boy Han Solo shows up? Yeah, yeah, how Not about that? How about, like, one of the be best uh, fucking, like, uh, uh, deus, ex ma deus ex machina uh, moments in cinematic history is when Han and Chewie show up in the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, every, every moment where Han Solo's on screen is pure Kino. Okay, okay, you know what? I'll go ahead and accept that. Uh, real quick, since Robin and me already gave our take on the very end, what did you think of the ceremony? Oh, um... I mean, I have no particular problems with the scene like Robin does, but I don't think it's the best thing in the movie like you do either. It's kind of just there. It's, it's like 20 minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, it's not 20 minutes long, but no, like, it fucking did you, feels like it, I'll tell but, you why. But did you feel anything? That that's that's what I'm asking. Like, cause, like, did, the very the first movie is sort of like great if you if you let your feelings sort of like flow in it. Like, what did you feel during that last scene? I felt I felt good. They won. I mean, they did it. Except you kind of realize that, like, they didn't actually win. Like, they didn't know the Death Star was a thing, and they were at this, like, war that already seems impossible, and then they were like, oh, shit, they have, like, a thing that's as big as a moon. What are we gonna... Oh, God, this is over. Like, and then they're like, hooray, we're back to just slightly losing. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you guys fucking put it like that, it sounds like it's just a pointless scene. <laughs> That, you know, could just cut down to, like, a minute of, like, you know, them just showing up in front of Leia, tagging them with a couple of medals and go, all right, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, we got shit to do. What are we, do what are we doing this ceremony for? We got you shit know, to do. You know, actually, you do have a really good point. There's just, like, so much going on outside. Like, dude, so you're telling me the entire uh, Rebel Alliance decided to suspend all operations to give these these uh, this group of freaking yahoos of uh, fucking medals <laughs> like you know like uh, what were the other rebel bases doing where they're, where they're getting their shit pushed in by the freaking empire and here's leia all like smiling and shit at all of them and and, and fucking uh, 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 3PO and R2D2 are just dicking around, going weep, 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 weep. Oh shit! Oh, we didn't even talk about C3PO. Three, I love C3PO. I was going to get to C3PO. C3PO. <laughs> All right, C3PO. All right. What did you think I'm of three... What did you think of R2D2? He was he was great. He was cute. I liked him. What did what would you think of the like the little droids, the little mouser droids, like? Rawr, 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 rawr. I don't really remember the little mouse droids that well. God damn you, Riley. All right, so what you think of 3 2? What you, you, what you think of 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 just 3 3 3 3 uh, Plus, we gotta, we gotta watch The Mandalorian yeah, so we can talk you. about how cute Baby Yoda is. Oh, God. You know, I actually really, really like The Mandalorian a whole lot. Uh, if we'll they talk were about just... The Mandalorian, too, when we talk about the sequel trilogy. Perhaps give Mo some sort of solace. Solace. Not solace. Yeah, plus, we gotta watch all of the Clone <laughs> Wars cartoon. Like... Oh, uh, God. That's a lot, though. Like, maybe we could just, like, good, watch though. Star cool. Wars because I watched one episode and said, This is fucking stupid, and then never watched anything Star Wars again. Dun, 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 dun. All the right. Clone Wars is pure gold. It's so good. I, I, I like the, the, the Gendi Tartofsky, or however the fuck you say his last name. I like Gend Gendi's uh, 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 stuff, the little, like, 30-second freaking clips. Those were mm -hmm. really, really cool. I, I couldn't really get into the 3D animated ones so much, but I, I do... I, I will eventually watch them. 
because like you know that's how Ashoka uh, Ash, uh, Ashoka 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 I'm fucking go. up the name Ashoka yeah that's well uh, fucking Anakin's a princess which is apparently mm. the the if you ever want to see what the de- definition of drop the ball looks like with a character Ahsoka uh, uh, Ahsoka yeah because she had like they uh they they Disney bought out Lucas. Uh, Isn't Anakin uh, like the main character in Clone Wars? Uh, him and Obi Wan and and his apprentice apparently. Uh, like it because... seems hard to like watch a cartoon and root for Anakin as the protagonist when we, when you know it's going to end with him turning evil. Well, that's the thing. You're supposed to just forget about that. Yeah. Well, don't worry. We'll get to the uh, to the prequels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's the prequels, which you, well, Is you know. Is Anakin the main about... character of the prequels? Huh? Is Anakin the main character of the prequels? Well, he becomes like one of the main characters, but it's mostly, in my opinion, Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah. Yeah, because it, yeah, it's. Yeah, I do want to know more about Obi Wan Kenobi. So. Yeah, because uh, o- Obi Wan is. Uh, uh, it, it becomes sort of his story, in a sense, because he's involved in all the really pivotal, p- pivotal moments, and the uh, the the really important. Uh, uh, aspects of the entire universe and sometimes him and Yoda too because this is a lot a lot of this is oh, Yoda's get to see story Yoda do a lightsaber fight in, in episode 2 yes you, you get to see yeah. it all right all right we want to talk about a hot female lead we're going to get Natalie Portman coming up too so. oh god she oh, she can't oh. act like this is before she she really learned how to act so you're going and of to have course to... we get the hottest male lead ever. We get fucking Ewan McGregor. It's, it's some good shit. Isn't Natalie Portman the chick who just like is really hot and that's her entire thing? Well, I'm, I'm actually about to get to that real quick. Like, you'll <laughs> in in episode two, you're going to have to endure a scene where it's fucking Anakin stuffing his goddamn face, going, "Oh yeah, fucking." Oh, uh, uh, fucking droids, yeah, and all this uh, Jedi shit. Nom, 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 nom. And, and fucking Natalie Portman's like, oh, yes, I know. I okay, feel no, so. Not, uh, Natalie Portman's not the girl I was thinking of. Yeah, it's like, yeah, Natalie Portman has more, ha- has more, has has no uh, emotion in her voice at all. So you don't believe any fucking scene she's in. It's like, right now we need to do this. This is really bad. Uh, and, you know, and fucking Anakin stuffing his goddamn face. Like, in fact, there's a few scenes of him stuffing his goddamn stupid fucking face, and, and them just smiling and talking. That's why Episode Two, you can pretty much just like Wikipedia, uh, the synopsis of Episode Two. You'll essentially get the whole premise of the movie. You don't have to watch it, but you know we're gonna god damn it yeah we're it's My getting all Jimmy down it's all downhill from here riley yeah but anyway anyway so we're, we're we're getting off the subject here and that's sort of my bad because i'm really bad at just sticking to the story yeah, we still got two more movies to talk yeah we about still here. got Goodbye. oh yeah we're good we're <laughs> and like oh yeah oh yeah anyway yeah. ryoku stop talking i can't fucking concentrate jesus christ no, uh, I'm Stop kidding. Stop talking kidding. on this podcast that you're guesting on, for God's sake! <laughs> like, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I know you like Star Wars so much, but you got to keep it down. Come on. Yeah, man. Like I and I didn't know that. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. That, that was good. Because of, I haven't even been able to get any opinions out because every time I've been told to shut my mouth, so it's like you know. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. uh, okay. Uh. Oh, uh, so Empire. What did you think? Uh, what does Riley think of Empire? Like, walk us through uh, how, like, what you, what you thought. I mean, in terms of quality, I'd say it's about the same. Like, I, a lot of people who I talked to who were Star Wars fans, besides the stupid one that I talked to that said that Rise of Skywalker was the best one, said that Empire Strikes <laughs> oh, Back was what the What a best piece of one. shit. <laughs> Well, Everyone like, I... that person is a piece of shit. Whoever you fucking talk to is just that absolute piece of shit. Anyway, anyway, en- enough about that. God damn it. Uh, ugh. Uh. We're not there Did... yet, but I'll let you in on a secret that the Return of the Jedi is 
my favorite of the originals. <laughs> actually, actually, yeah, it it, it kind of is for me. Like it, it, it fights. It's mine too, entirely because of the lightsaber fight at the end. Because it's the only good lightsaber fight in this entire trilogy. I just really love huts. <laughs> huts? I don't know. Oh, I love huts. The job of the hut. Oh, to, to say something. Oh, 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 hold, hold on a sec. Second. Hold on a sec. <laughs> oh, oh, all right, all right. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Something I forgot in a new hope. Job of the hut. I liked him for like the two minutes he was on screen. I was like, oh, I understand this guy. I understand what he's doing and why. Job of the hut gets character assassinated in Return of the Jedi. <laughs> No, 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 no. This is untrue. Yeah. W w hold on. What do you mean by character assassinated? He was I just don't... like, did it? Did they? Like did, a... did 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 Leia movie, try to like cancel like him on Twitter man. or something? <laughs> In the first movie, he's just like a businessman. He's like, I got a do business this. man. Oh. He, he, and in you, the you third saw... one, he's just like a horrible, enslaving people, fucking piece of shit. Well, no, he, he's, he's a, a mobster. Yeah, he's a hut. <laughs> Actually, he's a worm. But... Well, yeah, and, and a he's a worm. <laughs> but yeah, oh god. I feed him to a bigger worm. But there you go. Oh, 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 oh. I, can't, I can't wait to talk about that in a few. But anyway, anyway, anyway. So when uh, Luke's uh, uh, co pilot uh, got crushed by the, the giant AT AT, Riley. Did, did you feel something there by a chance, or did he suffer the know. same sort of? Fit? Huh, what? I already know what he's gonna say, but go on. <laughs> oh, but, or, or, I don't or even did you? What scene you're talking about? Oh come on, the, the the one where like Luke fucking like crashes right into the snow, and like his buddy is like knocked un out unconscious, but he can't get him out. So the giant, m giant walking metal camel, smashes his tiny little bitch plane. That for some reason or another, I didn't understand why the rebels had such shit technology, and so you you had this little tiny little plane. I mean, come on, did they not know that the the Empire had giant walking metal space camels? I, I mean, literally I, have I literally have zero recollection of this. So it's the Battle of Hoth. <laughs> it's like one of the it's the big first. It's it's the conclusion to the first act of the uh, of the second movie. No, I remember the Battle of Hoth. I just don't remember that specific part of the Battle of Hoth. I don't remember the person getting crushed. I don't remember that at all. Zero recollection. Oh, because it was a nobody character. That's why he doesn't remember it. <laughs> oh, poor. Poor bad, poor insulary characters, poor background My characters. Was sitting next to me, who, by the way, was for like the second half, second third of Empire Strikes Back. Somebody was watching it with me. Same friend who said Rise of the Skywalker was the best one, by the way. Oh. <laughs> and he was the. He told me that the Battle of Hoth was the best scene, and I was like, mm. uh, it was it's not, super it's important. Not the best scene. It's not the best scene in the movie. Oh, okay, all it's, right. It's like the 300 moment in the Star Wars universe. It's like, holy shit! Do you guys remember Hoth? Like, that's that's some shit, isn't it? Like, it's insane. it is it, it is the like 300 moment. It's the Spartans. Like, they did it. Yeah, except the this Empire time. Strikes back is the worst of the three. What? Oh, what? <laughs> what? <Okay. laughs> it's the worst it's the fucking wor w w fucking why <laughs> I, I think we are out of the originals just, it just gets better I think it's New Hope's the, the worst two. of them <laughs> oh. I think New Hope's the worst of them then Empire and then like then I think I rate them I think I rate them a 6 a 7 and, a, and an 8 and the 6 goes to Empire Strikes Back oh wow I've never heard these things said before <laughs> oh okay <laughs> it was hard. oh so, sorry what I just want to ask something to him real quick about. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure, his, sure. Just, just to get a general idea of his movie preferences for a second. Um, what would you rate as your top three movies, just in general? Okay, my top three movies. I don't even want to say this because I feel like I'm. Oh, gonna oh no. It's the emoji movie. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> not quite, not quite, not quite that bad. Um. I just want an anime movie and two Marvel movies, so I know I'm gonna get tucked on. Oh god, just oh, like what? Which god. two Marvel movies? Okay, that explains the two a lot. Marvel. Okay. Wait, did you uh, wait? Did you say an anime Homecoming movie? And Captain Marvel. Did you say an anime movie? <laughs> yes, the anime movie is Dragon Ball Super Broly. 
Oh, oh okay. No. Well, uh, uh, like well, top three movies top of all time. I mean, Broly's My pretty top three okay. Of all time are Dragon Ball Super Broly, Spider Man Homecoming, and Captain Marvel. Captain uh, Marvel? Yes. I mean, movie. over over Winter Soldier. I don't think I've ever seen Winter Soldier. So. God, that's like one of the best. Oh, there was an assassin. I, I, the Winter Soldier tries to assassinate fucking Samuel L. Jackson, the head of Shield. I mean, come on. And yeah, he's uh, he's I... never going to be he's never going to be uh, fucking Nick Fury. It's just going to be Sam Jackson because I think it's funnier that way. I mean, I I like uh, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is I, right, but like I, Captain. <gasps> I, I thought I thought it was a great movie. See, I thought that Cap, uh, uh, Doctor Strange had a really good first act, and the uh, the the chick the the actress who plays the uh, the head the head honcho that I forgot what the fuck. Then there's the a problem with it. The monk. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the actress that plays the monk. I I, I love the shit out of uh, uh, her whole body of work. Because she's she, I think it's like Her Kate Blanchett. Work, no, 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 no. It's I, I'm not just like getting horny for her or anything like Carrie Fisher. <laughs> it sounds no. like it. No, she. I think it's like <laughs> Kate Blecken, Blecken, Be Beckins, uh, some fucking British bitch. Uh, uh, fucking what's her name? Wow. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's no Ben Shapiro's sister. <laughs> oh no, 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 no Ben Shapiro's sister. My God. Oh, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, and you, <laughs> geez, did you did you see did you did you see fucking Ben Shapiro like hiding behind his fucking kids just like from Nick Fuentes? I mean, I, I know Nick Fuentes is a Empire little Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back. Hey, anyway, I, I'm just back. saying. Uh, all right, all right, all right. God, you know what? You know what? You know what? Because that was fucking funny. Because there's a picture of like this uh, uh, this very Ben Shapiro looking person. Yeah, because I don't want to say. Both parties were wrong in that situation. Move on. But they were just like he—he he just had like a bunch of babies strapped around him, and there's a word bubble that says "facts don't care about your feelings." <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my favorite thing. Like, because I don't care about either one of them, but that was my favorite meme to come out of the entire argument. Facts don't care about your kids' feelings either, Ben. Uh, anyway, who cares about Ben fucking Shapiro? Anyway, 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 anyway. My buddy Cameron, and, who forced me to listen to Ben Shapiro in exchange for him to listen to his social media argument. Cameron oh. Clark? No, not Cameron Clark. Dun, 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 dun. Another anyway. Cameron. All right, Empire Strikes Back. Empire, Empire Strikes, Strikes Back, Back. yeah. Back. Sorry, I got a sidetracked. I apologize. But... Oh, yeah, we, we, we get... We get sidetracked a lot on this show. I just had to understand his movie preferences to understand. I mean, I do agree with him on a lot of points, but it's like I'm not understanding some of his points. So I had to I had to understand his movie preferences a bit more just to see where he's coming from. So. And the movie preferences are shit. So I mean, you, it makes sense. <laughs> I mean, really, honestly, like Broly, like the the, the Broly movie, I think is pretty okay. It, it's got some. Uh, really, you could just like schlock it down to the intro scenes of all the characters, and then the big fight, and the 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 rest of the movie is pretty much who gives a shit. It, it's it's fucking, fucking Frieza. It, it's Frieza and Bulma. The animation. Well, yeah. Is beautiful. It, oh yeah, it's it's pretty good. I like the anime, uh, the uh, the animation uh, uh, type, or, or the the quality of it because it's a little different and drawn it's and shaded differently. It's literally the only movie I've ever walked out of like so hyped to have seen it. I'm like, holy shit. This movie's so fucking great. And I, like, start calling my friends who I know like Dragon Ball to fucking scream about it to them. Because I was just so fucking hyped walking out of that movie. It's the best movie experience I've ever had. It's my favorite movie. Really? Right. That, really? That, like, so that, that, that is, like, the one of the best uh, cinematic experiences you, you've had? Like, it's the uh, best one. It's literally my number one movie. All right. All right. Like, like when I ask you and this. I... Oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Rio. No, I was just gonna say Empire Strikes Back again because we are really getting off track. But <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, shit. Uh, uh, all right, you know what? That's another conversation for another time. We'll, we'll talk about Dragon Ball movies and shit, and our movie uh, uh, tastes and all that for another episode. Anyway, um, thank you, Rio. Uh, <laughs> fucking okay. So I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. There, there was. I wanted you. I wanted to know what you thought of the, the more iconic scene. And Empire Strikes Back, and of course, the biggest plot twist in anime history. Yes, yes, and that of course is the the scene 
And that, of course, is the scene where Han goes, and I thought they smelled bad on the outside. You know, the most, like, lampooned and referenced movie, uh, movie scene. Like, it, I it's, still it's feel one of them. bad for that Tauntaun. It did nothing wrong. It's just an innocent... Yep. Little but it, but it froze to death, so it had to be useful for something. Unfortunately. Oh, did it die? I thought they killed it. Oh no no no! The Tonto oh, like no, it just collapsed. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, re remember when the uh, the 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 checkpoint guard uh, was talking to Han in the uh, in the base when Han goes, "Then I'll see you in hell." You know, you're like your Tonto will freeze before you get to the next uh, first choke point. Oh no, we forgot McClunky. We forgot to go over McClunky. <laughs> I was oh, gonna McCl mention McClunky, and then we got on a side tangent. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We'll, we'll talk about McClunky in a second because that's just McClunky. disappointment. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So, so what, what did you think of like that? That the first most iconic uh, Star Wars scene bes besides uh, you use the Force, Luke. The Tauntaun scene was pretty funny. The uh, just to talk about that for a second, um, and the biggest t anime plot twist in history the, the I yep. am your father that always gets misquoted uh -huh. I am your brother's sister's uh, second Uncle roommate this is the joke I made Believe in like that. second grade yeah it was the joke that was done all through the 80s and Spaceballs pretty much ended the meme <laughs> yeah, Spaceballs I am was your father's no, Spaceballs was fucking awesome child Second roommate in college. What does that make <laughs> us? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I guess, uh, I, you know, for the time's sake, I guess we'll skip over Cloud City and all that. And Well, what do you think of Lando Calrissian, the, the new, suddenly new character in the Star Wars uh, he universe? He was an asshole, but then he redeemed himself. Well, what did you think of him? Damn, did, did you him. have any I I've been trying to like get uh, solicit feelings. I fucking hated him and then I liked him at the end when he redeemed himself. <sighs> he was insufferable and annoying and then he betrayed them, so I hated them, and then he kinda redeemed himself by the end of the movie and he redeemed himself in the next movie. So I hated him at first, and now I like him. Alright, alright. Uh, <laughs> alright, alright. Cool, cool, cool. Um but all right, so I wasn't done twist. talking about literally the most iconic scene in the movie. If yeah, the, that, that was that was my bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll shut the <laughs> fuck up now. Go ahead. <laughs> As for the "I am your father" scene, pretty good twist. Like obviously, I knew it was coming because I'm a human who exists. I obviously knew that Darth Vader was Luke's father. <laughs> well, well, did, did you? Uh -huh. But the important thing is, did you know before you watched the movie? Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> Who did it? I figured that maybe there would be like some holdout in like South Africa and some like freaking village somewhere. Maybe. Who, who, who maybe, didn't, maybe who just happened to South not. South African listeners who didn't know that the fucking. Yeah, all of our, our South African audience, you know, like, hey, shout <laughs> outs is uh, shout out to the freaking uh, uh, the, the rainforest. Himiyama, Himi, Himiyama, and, and all that. Shout out to Unbongo. Our all right, all right, hold on. List. Okay, hold on, Adolf, all right? Let's not get racist, okay? These are, this is the one time the South African audience is going to get referenced in this fucking show. So maybe, you know, have a little bit of respect. <laughs> is, Thank you. To be fair, I was referencing a sitcom. That's not come directly from my brain. <laughs> okay, Riley, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, um, um, that scene was pretty cool. I think uh, Luke getting his arm cut off was pretty fucking metal. Um, yeah, that was definitely a shocker. Not quite like as metal as the literal skeletons of the first movie that I forgot to talk about, where Luke's aunt and uncle literally get fucking skeletonized. Oh, dude, yeah, like poor bastards. Like you could tell, like they probably got in like one of the fucking shock stormtroopers, uh, the ones with the freaking uh, uh, flamethrower, and they just freaking cooked them. I bet that wasn't the wacky punch out ending that Aunt Peru and Uncle Owen uh, wanted. Yeah, that, that 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 was a bummer. The funniest thing out of that though was uh, the Aunt Peru and Uncle Owen action figures, and they're literally just a bunch of fucking ashtray ashes <laughs> into the package. <laughs> but yeah, that's 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 what I loved. <clears throat> uh oh, we lost Robin. Oh, rip. Bad. 
Uh oh. Well, anyway. Oh, there. Oh, there there she is. is. Oh, but anyway. Sorry about that. Oh, no problem. No problem. Uh, we're, we're not editing this. This is just too damn good to edit. I'm, I'm going to put some uh, sound filters on, like put the intro in, and then boom, we're, you know, wiping its ass, dehorning it, wiping its ass, and sending it on out. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 when I was a kid and I saw Luke get his freaking limb lopped off for the first time, I didn't expect that at all. I, I just figured that, you know, we would like get, he would just get disarmed, uh, but I didn't know they were going to do it literally. And so that, that was a fucking shocking scene, uh, uh, when, when I was a kid. Because like when you're a kid, you you expect like you you really just didn't watch that many uh, children's mo movies or shows. It was mo mainly uh, back in my day like uh, Sesame Street and stuff like that. We Tell didn't actually me have how to get how to get to Sesame Street. <laughs> yeah, th thank you, thank you, thank you for that. You're thank welcome. you, thank you for that interject that 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 good injection of Riley material. Anyway, well, he, he used to watch it as a kid, so he remembers the song. Like he was, he was listening to that like what two years ago. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I only Just watched the... Sesame Street for Elmo's World. That was the only part that was worth it. Oh, you shouldn't even say that as a grown <laughs> as at your age. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Elmo's <laughs> World is keto. Anywho, yeah. So to <laughs> to wrap up what I was saying. Yeah, scared the shit, like shocked the shit out of me as a kid, it and that was, was, yeah, disarmed me. It was disarming, you know, like it, it was just crazy, <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so it was. Uh, uh, that that scene was when I knew that I was really, really into films, and I I wanted to do something, a uh, uh, film or TV related. That's that's I've what got me into I've been ruined by YouTube, so when he lost his arm, all I could think is the line from Dragon Ball Z Abridged where Vegeta says, looks like he's been disarmed. Dear God. <laughs> <laughs> when Nappa rips Tien's arm off. So what did you think of the scene where, uh, for some reason or another, there's a bunch of... Uh, 80s freaking cell phone tower not, not cell phone towers tv freaking antenna uh underneath uh cloud city and that's where luke or, uh, th that's where uh, uh princess leia and the gang went to go pick up luke well, what did you think of that because for me i'm terrified of heights so that was all i was always scared of that scene when i was a kid what what what, what did you think of the uh the, the saving of luke uh, that was pretty intense. Like, that was a good scene. Cool, cool, cool. Well, I mean, that's it. Yeah. I mean, oh, well, <laughs> Ryan, do you have any emotion? <laughs> no. I mean, the one thing um, I was going through in my head for that scene was, well, he's got more balls than I ever fucking would, because uh, if it was me, I would just be like, fuck this shit, and then I'd just jump into the pit. <laughs> it's like, I wouldn't even try. <laughs> so I'd just be like, I'm out. That, yeah, that that the, that whole atmosphere is definitely a don't look down moment, because it's like hundred. It's presumably I mean, like. I wouldn't. I wouldn't fucking attempt to try that shit with one arm. Fuck that shit. So. He's like, Ugh, man, take all my sis. Oh, you know what? We 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 sort of, uh, glossed over the most one of the more important, uh, character reveals, uh, not baby. Yoda, but actually Yoda. What did you think of the introduction of Yoda and, and Dagobah and and the uh, the the trials that Luke be started going through? Baby. Riley, I will fucking slap the <laughs> shit out of you if you don't stop your bullshit. I will fucking just like go. I will find out where you live. I will show up, grab you by your freaking collar, and paintbrush you across your cheeks, over and over I've again. Always... My serious thoughts on Yoda, I've always liked Yoda. That's, all, that's like the only thing about Star Wars that I cared about. I'm like, oh, this Yoda guy, I like him. So, that held true here. I like Yoda. Uh, Robin, did, did you... <laughs> did, did you uh, what, what, what did you think of Yoda when you first saw him? Um, I, I mean, when I saw him as a kid, I, I liked him a lot. I mean, like looking at it now, it's like the cl the cl the cl 
classic trope of just like, oh, this person's really old and wise and knows everything. A super genius. I wouldn't call Yoda, I guess, a super genius, but I well, mean, not like well, then not again, smart, but wise when it comes to the Force. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's like stuff like where what you know the 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 one thing that the the original six movies never really established and. This really pisses me off because, like, sort of George Lucas sort of assumed that you read probably some of the comics, but they never established why Yoda went into uh, exile, you know, why he's on Dagobah. Like, you basically have to read a comic because there's a comic that explains specifically and in better detail why the Jedi go into exile. And, uh, and this is my problem with Star Wars in general. It's like, oh, you want to get into Star Wars? You just have to watch, you know, all nine movies, uh, plus The Mandalorian, and then you have to read uh, about, like, 50,000 pages of extended universe lore. And then it'll be good, and then you know Star you Wars, and you'll really, you'll really love it. Fortnite at a very specific time to understand something in The Rise of Skywalker. Oh, yeah, and you got to play the games, of course. Oh, you gotta play, like, God. The, uh, you got to play KOTOR, like... <laughs> Yeah, and to this be fair, is Kotor is the best of the series. If you have, uh, I, I mean, know. I'm not Kotor a is so good. Fan, but I, I still love playing Kotor and Kotor Two to this day. What is Knights well. of the Republic? What is that game? What, is, oh. what do you do? Like, what's the gameplay like? You just play it. Don't, don't look anything. Don't spoil no, yourself. Just, just play just, it. It's I, so good. I didn't, and it was great. I just want to know anyway. about the mechanics. Like, what kind of game is it? It's like an action role role playing game. Okay. But Star Wars. And you can make your own character. So, I'll have to actually w play Knights of the Old Republic because I never got to play that game. It was right around okay, the time cool. uh, that I was wanting to also play. I, I think it's like Jade Empire, or, or Jade uh, good. The, like the the people who apparently made that uh, game series made that game too. And I, I've been Bioware. I've, Bioware did it. All right, good, good, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've, I've always wanted to play that game, but I never really got around to it because I was too busy playing uh, freaking uh, the, the Dark Forces uh, Star Wars series, which has some of my favorite uh, characters like Kyle Katarin, and f it fleshes out Luke Skywalker, like, uh, you know, like way after the Rebellion Skywalker. And I love the shit out of that. I mean, once, but, once you play KOTOR, I would actually love to have a discussion with you about it, because of, especially after the first one. The first one is, like, I would definitely love to hear so you good. that though, so. so may I say about this movie? All right, yeah, um, the, the synopsis of, of uh, Empire Strikes Back for in Riley's perspective. What do you think? Hold on, I was about to talk about a specific scene for just a second. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Character. I didn't like Leia in this movie very much at some points. Like, she was fine in the first one. She's a lot better in the third one. In the second one, she I didn't like her very much in a lot of the scenes. Well, because she's very bossy and very yelly, and honestly, yeah. unless unless you, the, the, her whole point is to essentially... And she also emotionally manipulates Luke yes. to prove that she doesn't have a crush on Han Solo. Emotionally manipulates both of them. <laughs> like... Yes, he, she, she like. I find it so funny that she's like, "Wow, you think I have a crush on you? Well, watch this fucker," and then just fucking tongue kisses Luke Skywalker. Uh -huh. Which uh, you know, after the biggest, the biggest plot twist in anime history, uh, how do you feel about that kiss, Riley? It's fine. I refuse to accept. I refuse to accept it. They weren't and, brother and sister until the third movie. And, 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 and did you? In the first two, they were not. <laughs> And did you notice? And did you notice the the little uh, subtle like roll kiss that she gives Luke when he's all like, "My arm got cut off, and I'm laying here, and I'm hurt." Brr. Did you ever notice that? No, because I thought yeah, she was she kind of like roll in the arms she, of Han at that point. Well, she kind of roll kisses a little bit. Uh, like it, it's it's weird. She. Mm, uh, fucking like her, him. It's it's weird. Like I've seen the movie like a hundred times, and there's that scene where she like sort of half kisses him. I think she stops, because I think at that point they sort of uh, start to tease that there's a, a brother sister connection. There's more of a connection there, and so I think she forgot about that. Either that or it was shot out of sequence and she just didn't know, because it's fucking you know it's Dick and Pussy Slayer freaking Carrie Fisher. 
slaying it all up and down the United States and worldwide at this point because they're fucking mega stars now. And this movie, I think, solidified that. Oh, man. She got so much action. Uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. It pisses me off. I wish I was born in a, a decade earlier. I would have tried to, like, you know, throw my, my bait and tackle out there and see if I could have caught Carrie. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, 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 anyway. So, uh, what what was the, I guess, the synopsis of Empire for you, Riley? What would you think? It's not a bad movie by any stretch, but it's just okay. It's the worst of the original three, in my opinion. Oh, blasphemy. All right, all right, okay, okay, okay. You know what? I'm sorry, Asterios. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone else who told me Empire was the best one. <sighs> you, you hear me sighing and just huffing <laughs> with, with just aggravation. But anyway, anyway, you know what? But it's it's about... we're moving on to the best one. Yeah, because we are moving on to the very last one. Uh, some say it's the best out of the series. I kind of feel like it is because it was the one I think I watched. It's the best watched... out of the three. I, I think I it's haven't the... seen the rest of them. It, it, it's, it's the one that I think I watched the most as a kid. And that's... Uh, uh... Oh, uh, you know what? what? One question before I move on. What did you think of the, the, the ending? Uh, all right, so like, think of the very, very end of uh, uh, New Hope, and then think of the very end of Empire. What did you think comparing and contrasting the two of them? Um, I guess apparently I liked the first one better, since I don't even remember how Empire Strikes Back ended. Really, it's like a huge establishing shot of the Rebel fleet. It's like, you know, it ends on such a down note. Uh, Han gets kidnapped by Boba Fett and the Empire, and he's being delivered to Jabba the Hutt. They're looking at the star, the the cluster of stars and the nebula <clears throat> off to the right. Really, like you you didn't you didn't feel anything from that c scene at all? No, didn't even stick I in felt, my head. I felt so good about it because finally the Empire's Empire's gonna take over. Thank God. <laughs> I don't know oh, if you're I... actually trolling or not, but the fucking rebel scum. Okay, so I, I I take it that you're an imperialist when it comes to the rebel and uh, 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 uh rebel and empire fight. Uh, I mean, they're both kind of shit, but <laughs> do do you know? You know? He, here's a here's a question that doesn't get asked very much. Do you think anyone in like the back alley, fucking like the 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 hut space? Do you, like the the all the plants in the, like a uh, quote unquote uh, job of the huts uh, space? Do you think they felt any change at all from Rebel Alliance uh, or from Empire to Rebel Alliance at all from their governments? Do you think anything changed for them? Robin, <laughs> just the utter silence. <laughs> I mean, in my personal opinion, I'd say no. Uh, well, because I was kind of thinking about that when I watched uh, The Mandalorian, and I thought to myself, you know, how many of these fucking, you know, back alley worlds and, and hut space and all that, uh, how, did, did anything improve for them? Like, did anyone's lives, and uh, like, did, did, any, did the cities or anything in, in Tatooine, for instance, uh, did, did that ever improve? Did they ever uh, get any of the... Uh, you know, like, what happened to the Huts after that? Did their criminal empire get broken up? Did the Rebel Alliance try to uh, fight crime in, in these really bad parts of uh, the known universe? I, I've never really been able to figure out if they have or haven't. And, like, what that, you know, like, the, the toll that took on the bounty think, hunter community. Stuff like that. I think it's because of it's more of a... I, no offense to that part of the story because it's actually I, I actually quite enjoy those like parts of the story right but, uh it's like i think personally it was just like a little like side thing that they just decided to add in last minute and then it's like after they left it's just kind of like out of existence you know they just kind of forgot about it so yeah they, they, they probably they didn't, didn't they didn't really expand upon it it's like there's no need to expand upon it even though there are people like you who want it to be expanded upon so it's like you know yeah that, that's actually a fortunate flaw in the star wars universe is that george lucas i think only intended for the universe to go so far 
he didn't but, think that it was going to become such an established universe and people were going to like it so much. This is where I think, uh, this is where I think the games can actually like do the job that the movies can't. I mean, you could easily do a game just based on how they think Tatooine would have changed depending on how the movies went. So, but they haven't done anything like that yet. So, right, right. And like only time, like a, I think that we're probably getting that now with the Mandalorian series. And I really appreciate that a lot because I wanted a series that expanded upon uh, uh, the Mandalorian people. And I wasn't really interested in, like, a movie. Where... Oh, that's the fucking rooster out there. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was like, because I was thinking, is that the fucking cat? Did I hear, do I hear a hungry cat meowing? I was like, no, it's... Yeah, what it's... a cock. Yeah, uh, literally. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, yeah, that, that's... That's that's what I'm hopeful for for the Mandalorian is that we're going to get an extension uh, of of all that and, and we've gotten that so far and so far I'm very very happy but anyway different different episode altogether yeah. uh, so we get to the final one what all right we, we blah, 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 blah. I might need to go get some water in a second and have you guys talk if that's okay um, what did you, Riley what did you think about the uh, about Luke and Leia and everyone showing up uh, at Jabba the Hutt's freaking palace to extract uh, a Han Solo from the Hutt's. I mean, I said earlier that I feel like Jabba the Hutt's character here is completely different than it was in the first movie, and I don't like it. You didn't the like this movie? You misinterpreted him in the first movie. Like, you thought he was, like, a businessman? But, like, it no, sets up like, Han Solo as a he's smuggler. He's a mob boss, obviously. He's, like, a criminal. But he, yeah. like, did it in sort of, like, a business way. Like, he's like, hey, I like you, but you did a thing, and I don't want other people to do that thing, so you have to pay up or I'm going to kill you. And... Yeah, and, and what's a better message than a big, like, carbon statue of the dude right behind <laughs> him that, like, didn't pay up, right? No, like, that's a great that. message. it's not even that. That makes sense. It's just that he's this disgusting piece of shit with fucking women chained up, fucking choking him and shit. Yeah, and yeah, like that, that's good. That's some strange monster. That's good. He's a mob boss. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the point. That's like you know that that's like what a comic book villain would do. I was gonna say, Mo, are you into that? Because it's like. Uh... <laughs> well, not to being chained up and fed to the rancor. Like, um, maybe maybe you know you can like slap a pair of cuffs on me. Maybe we can talk, but you know, like. <laughs> Look, I don't know how I feel about the slave stuff. It did it did it did get a rise out of me with Leia. God. Uh... But yeah, I mean, something to be, rose. <laughs> to be fair, Riley, as you as you did state in the first movie, there was only like a glimpse of him. You didn't really get much. Uh, you didn't get much screen time, and you only in got like. In the first like, movie, the he seemed like a. Him. So he seemed like a mob boss as they'd be portrayed in like a normal movie. Like, yeah, but that's a, the thing. That was what you portrayed. That's what you thought. Yeah. That's only because of the limited screen time he got. Whereas in the second one, he actually managed. To, they actually expanded what what you saw of him. In, in the first one. It just happened to, to be that your perspective of it was wrong. Not necessarily wrong. He also looked wrong, less disgusting but... in the first movie. Yeah. Well I, I think but... the I think the point that they're trying to convey is like they're they're trying to make this look like you know they're trying to make Jabba out to look like, you know, a disgusting creature, you know, like he's just so slovenly. Oh, yes. <laughs> like, yeah, he's just a despicable, like what you would consider a human being. Which, by the way, that was the original uh, idea, the concept for Jabba the Hutt. He was just going to be a freaking another human, but he was just going to be a fat guy. But something happened with the actor and they never got to use him. And so they thought to themselves, well, why not make Jabba the Hutt a freaking alien of some sort? And this is where we started getting the uh, the rough drafts and the the, uh, the idea of of what Jabba the Hutt would turn out to be. Well, I no, honestly, really I neat. think it works better with him being an alien because of it's like not being funny, but you know, a fat guy, a fat human guy being in charge and having like and wanting to be feel empowered. Yeah, like a, a, a fucking like, another one. I mean, for fuck's sake, we see that, uh, uh, we see and hear about that enough in, like, pretty much anything and everything. Yeah, so it, We didn't need to fucking see it again. But it, yeah. it's like, with, with, with it being an alien, it actually, like, shows how worthless he considers, like, the human race to be. He only sees them as, like, 
slaves or people he can abuse and stuff like that and that's because and it actually works better because he's an alien so well and actually the the thing i like about huts is that like they're they're pretty much evolutionary powerhouses like they're they're predators they were designed <laughs> to be predators and their brains also evolved to be very smart and so they realized like Wow, we don't have to go around and like hunt stuff. We can just like do business. If people do our shit for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can just do business. We'll we'll be lazy and we'll sit around. Like even though they're incredibly strong and incredibly powerful, they're like we're just gonna go like lay down and do nothing and get other people to do shit for us because we have like the business savvy for it. So it's a typical businessman, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much, I'm pretty sure that job of the hut ultimately was some sort of social commentary on like your everyday businessman. Especially since this movie the was hut. in the 80s. Oh, he, what? He's also like the biggest hut. He is? Huts are new, normally not that big, yeah. Oh, well, we, so we see so little of the huts in the entire series. Like, yeah, even, we don't really see much of them after Java, do we? Uh, not really, not at all. Like, th that's, that's one thing that they never really expanded upon was sort of the, 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 the hut the race. Ones? No, no, not really. Not well. Not that I know of at all. I, I haven't seen. I haven't seen anything uh, with the huts in the last two, uh, uh, seven and eight. Uh, but yeah. anyway, uh, so ultimately, so what? What did you think of the first act of the the movie, Riley? The 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 extraction, the 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 rescue of I, Han Solo, and all that. What did you think of that scene? I thought it was disgusting, and I didn't like it. Like I think the movie would be a nine i give it an eight it would be a nine i think it loses a point for that first act i just don't like it like you physically don't like it is that like what we're i mean did you or, or would you were you sort of opposed to like I, i'm i guess i'm not really getting what you're driving at specifically i'm opposed like, to how they portrayed job of the hut and how they portrayed that whole situation it, it it's just yeah, the vi a lot of it was visual. It's visually just disgusting and horrible. All right. Uh, um, so, so like, I guess you did really like the Sarlacc pit at all, then? No. <laughs> well, what did you think of like a giant butthole in the middle of freaking the desert, uh, <laughs> grabbing you and eating you? Oh boy. The once they once they got out of the fucking disgusting hole, it got a little better. I did like the whole monster. It's like a wet dream I've had. <laughs> I know. It's like so. <laughs> Probably several like, huh? I didn't know I felt now, this way. <laughs> as someone who's never a lot seen of weird Star fetishes, Wars, I had heard a lot about what happens in Empire, but other than that, I was completely blank on the other two, including this one. And the plot that I was expecting within the first act did not happen. But I think you might find it interesting what I thought was going to happen. Okay, or just dunk on me for being horrible. At no, 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 no. Go, go ahead. What, what was your what was your head canon, I guess? What what did you think? So my you head did? my head was going when I first when we first started watching the movie, it starts with C three PO and R two D two going to talk to Jabba the Hutt. And then when they it starts when they um portray the hologram of Luke. Luke is in like a different outfit. He looks his demeanor's different. The way he talks is very like calculated. And then later he sort of, he at several times threatens Jabba the Hutt's life, just like completely emotionless. So my... He also kills both go, guards for like no he does reason. He kill both guards for no reason. Which when and, I was a kid, uh, let me interrupt you real quick, buddy. When I was a kid, uh, to see Luke do that compared to how he handled himself in uh, 2... When he was uh, the the ice monster, I, I forgot what it what that monster is called, but when he's uh, uh, he he regretted he you know you can see that Luke didn't want to actually hurt the monster, he was just defending himself, but like seeing Luke from from then till like that point to see him use the force to kill but to choke out both guards that's something that you know Darth Vader would do. And, and right around yes, this time, the, the Jedi, the, the Sith aren't really a thing. Uh, so, you know, you're thinking Dark, for, you're a dark, dark Force user, because that's what you got to go on. Because I kind of thought that that was a little bit more effective than the title Sith. Because, like, when they put it into sort of like a... When you give the dark side more of a name, 
other than the quote unquote the dark side you know it kind of lost its luster a little bit because now you gave a, a it's it's sort of like a physical name to to evil just like i what i thought the medical of the midichlorians was a a, a a physical name to the quote unquote good or the light side of the force and i, I thought well, that ruined it for me but yeah and and, and I, I i get that it's a race but essentially the 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 dark side was kind of co things, yes. Like the, the OG Sith are like the origins of the dark side of the Force. Yeah, yeah. Like and similar to the midichlorians were the origins of the light side of the Force, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I guess I just don't like the, the origin part. I liked it when it was just called the light, side, the light side or the dark side because it was up to interpretation. Because, when it went, like I said, when they named it, it was like you gave it such a finality. You gave it like form. And I'm like, eh. Well, people who are of the Sith race would probably reject non-Sith from calling themselves Sith just for being on the dark side. They'd yeah. Be like you, you're not a, you're not of pure blood. What the hell are you calling yourself a Sith for? Yeah, it, it, yeah. Fundamentalism really does reign supreme in the Sith universe, and arguably in the Jedi universe as well, because there's no there's no room for quote unquote gray Jedi. In fact, gray Jedi and, and, and Jedi who, uh, who operate outside the norms, which Qui-Gon Jinn uh, was practically almost expelled several times from the Order for uh, following more of his gut instinct than he would the rules of the Jedi Council or the, Jedi, uh, uh, the Jedi established Jedi law. But oh, oh, that, that's a story for another day. Um, so all so, right. so we're, we're, we're past... The, the the saving part, my, my favorite part. I was talking part. about where I thought I was, the movie was going. And he oh, shit. My, my bad, buddy. I totally did interrupt <laughs> you. Sorry. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. So, between his, like, cruel and calculatedness at the beginning of the movie and the new black outfit and the new green lightsaber, as green is sort of, like, a more evil color than blue in a way. <laughs> um, you, you, yeah, I, I, can, I can see that. So I, what I expected was Luke would go once he once he was going to Yoda. I thought that I had exactly had it. So I thought what was going to happen was Luke was going to go back to the planet where Yoda was, and Yoda was going to be like fucking shocked and be like, "You've changed. You're going towards the dark side," and Luke would be like on the path to the dark side, and throughout the movie he'd be like slowly more drawn in into the dark side until he is able to break free. That's what I was expecting. Like, the movie would have Luke slowly turning to the dark side, slowly starting to understand Darth Vader and where he's coming from until he's able to come to his senses. But that, that doesn't really happen. That, I, well, I'm kind of disappointed that didn't happen because that's what I was expecting. I'm like, oh, that's going to be fucking awesome. Bad, but then it sounds pretty happen. fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. it's cool. That's it why does. when it didn't happen, I was sad. Well, I, I kind of think that Yoda sort of sensed that a little bit, but then he was also he was also very sick and he was dying. So uh, Yoda, I suppose, wasn't really in a position to lecture anyone. In fact, I think his I think his final speech was probably his. La I think he probably felt the dark side uh, festering in, in Luke a little bit. The movie didn't really do a very good job of conveying that in, in most scenes because well in most scenes like Luke is a naturally very good natured person and he is a good person and so like when he's talking to to Yoda you can sense the the emotion in his voice and you know he doesn't want him to die and he doesn't understand why he's dying and uh, I, I think that last speech uh, the the last little uh, bit that Yoda told him was him sensing that there was darkness in him, but he's trying to pull him back into the light. He just didn't have enough time to tell him exactly what. Even though he could have just cut to the fucking point and just said, hey, uh, hey, uh, uh, Leia is your sister, instead of just going, there is another sky walking. It was like, oh, okay. You could have just said that. It's just, you know, it's just a stupid movie thing. But anyway, um... Uh, so what what did you think of the Yoda death scene? What did you think of him dying? I mean, it was pretty emotional. It was conveyed really well. The scene was impactful. It's just a good scene. It's a good piece of film. It's a good emotionally impactful 
I feel like you're reading off a freaking script just to freaking say, just just to just to placate my my my, my <laughs> placate me and my feelings. Like I, I feel like you're trying to spare my feelings a little bit when you're like. Well, it's also like when when you hand a sociopath <laughs> like an like a like a test and they're just answering like what they think you want them to say. Yeah, <laughs> he's, got, he's got notepad open. And he's got, like, <laughs> well, of course, the scene was quite emotional. <laughs> yes, I felt very. Sad. Oh yes, like when this happened, I was real sad. But you know, yes, I liked it. But but Look, yeah, I'm not a fucking I'm not a fucking like a <laughs> film critiquing journalist. I don't well, like you were say. supposed to. Uh, uh, I well, like yeah, but you were supposed to like you know, I I don't know if like I think the big thing out of this entire Riley review is like. You didn't have. It's like you didn't feel like your emotions very well. It's like you just sort of roll, rolled with it. What's up, sweetie? Oh, okay, good. Go, go, give them to your. Go, give them to mama. I don't. I don't want them, sweetie. But thank you. I appreciate it. I said it was sad. Oh, it's sad. It's a sad. It's in that thing. moment Mo remembers why he's pro-choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That's 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 quite fine. That's quite fine. She does that all the time. She like, you know, like she really is sweet. She uh, whatever, whatever she doesn't think that I understand her, she'll grab my hand and like just guide me to the shit and then point at it, and I'm like, oh, okay, okay, uh, uh, you know exactly what uh, what to do there. All right, good. You have a brain. You'll you'll actually go far. The other one is a fucking plant worker. You fucking you can tell he's a fucking carpenter, dumbass. And Jesus. Anyway, uh, uh, God, and that's that's a whole struggle, uh, years on down the line. Anyway, um, so so yeah 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 like a. I forgot the point that I was even making. So, fast forward to. You were saying that I'm an emotionless, soulless man for not. Somehow making myself sound sadder about you. Well, I don't know. Like That's I, I like figured, that was what we were talking about. Oh, okay, okay. I, I figured that you were uh, uh, going to like have a little bit more, like I guess, more in depth, like because like th this will maybe it's just me. And maybe it's just uh, for me and Robin, or for Robin and I, and uh, probably possibly even Ryoku here. Well, maybe Mo, we did just you, like cry your eyes out during these movies, like. No, oh, but I, I definitely like I definitely like felt like the, the 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 impact of the moments. Like, of course, you know, I felt like real genuine sadness of, of like when Yoda died, for example. And I didn't understand that as a kid. And even when I'm a, a, a adult now, an adult now, um, I see right. that, and I, I still feel that emotion that the uh, the the old wise master. It has to die, you know, like how Ugwe uh, had to die in Kung Fu Panda, because his time has simply come. That's and, some sad shit. Oh, some sad shit. That's it. Yeah, and, and it's just uh, Ugwe dying is exactly like, uh, like you Yoda dying. During that scene, because I, I didn't cry during that scene. Well, but I, like I'm, a, I'm a dude. Your, oh, I'm a dude. We don't cry normally. Heavier, and it's like yeah. you definitely feel like there's there's like something else going on and it's just like you can't really explain it it's like the you, you just go ahead sorry just feel heavy just yeah feel and, heavy. and the like... music the music in the scene really does tie oh, the, the music scene. helps definitely, yeah so. definitely the, uh, it, it ties the uh, the feeling the emotion that the uh, the scene is trying to convey really really well and I'm thinking uh, you know like may maybe maybe the today's generation and i totally don't mean to just talk down to you riley i really don't um it, it seems like today's you generation darn zoomers in there well you, you darn zoomers and your lack of emotion and your <laughs> you, you're you, you're you're not pay I, I don't know like it's like i maybe maybe the music maybe the scenery maybe everything isn't as impactful to you as it is to me I mean, may, and that's why well, maybe the next three... Well, you have not that good at conveying it. I'm sorry that I didn't convey it enough. It was very well, also... sad. No, no, no. Like, I, I no. don't know. Like, it's like when you, when you tell me in your head, when you, your theater of the... It feels like your theater of the mind wasn't being played with as much as, like, 
the rest of us here in the show. And I, I'm totally sorry if that, like, I, I do not mean to talk down to you when I say that. I'm just, I was just sort of extrapolating that as the review went on. So, you know, my apologies. Well, well, Mo, you also, you have the nostalgia glasses on. So yeah, I, I, I definitely have some very sizable nostalgia glasses on. But that's that's fine and that's cool because like you know I'm I'm thinking once we get to the 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 the, the sequel trilogy I, I think that's when your uh, your uh, conveyance and, and means of expression and emotion are probably going to come out and be much more prevalent than they are now for the old movies I suppose because I think they're more geared toward you instead of me and I totally accept that I, I don't resent. Uh, J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson for doing that because I totally get that because I don't want to see the same. Yeah, because you have a million other things you resent them for. Oh, oh, yeah, God, yeah, <laughs> on like the list of shit I hate them for, like I, that is not on the list, and I'll give them compliments. I'll shower them with praises from up on high, you know, you know, just from from my Twitter high horse, like here. Heaps of praises, and here's a rope. God, get on air. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so, so we I think we moved past the death is the death of Yoda scene. We're finally Hold on, I have a I have a quick tangent. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. This is the story of the only piece of media that has ever made me cry, and it's maybe the most embarrassing story I will ever tell on the podcast. Is it Ugwe dying in Kung Fu Panda? Because it almost no, made me cry. I've never seen Kung Fu Panda. You've never seen Kung Fu Panda? It's like one of the best. It's it's one of the best it's animated the karate. It's better than I saw the DBZ Kung Brawly. I Kung Fu Panda 2 when I was a young kid, and I remember none of it, and I haven't seen any of the others. So. Uh, all right, all right. So, oh, God's honest truth, man. Uh, Kung Fu Panda is way, way better than uh, Dragon Ball Z Brawly. Dragon Ball Super Brawly. And I love Brawly. Don't get me wrong. But way, way, way better, especially for a kung fu martial arts movie. Anyway, go right ahead with your tangent, your story. Oh, what so, made you What made you cry like a little bitch and got your man card removed? <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Cry. I'm kidding. It I'm wasn't kidding. a big cry. It was just like a couple of tear streams. Um, it was less a sad and more like an inspired, impactful moment. But um, was it when Was it when Samwise Ganji? Oh damn! Oh, go ahead. The, <laughs> we were the Japanese show Super Sentai, the um the show that Power Rangers draws its footage yeah. from. Yeah, uh, yeah, Sentai, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm aware of it, but I've only been, only ever seen it through Power Rangers. So, a anything, anything that you're being specific on, I'll have no idea. But go ahead, please. Okay, enlighten yeah, so me. There's, I'm gonna explain. Something. So there's a sentai that did not get adapted into a power rangers that's mostly a comedic sentai called tokyujer and the the gimmick of tokyujer is that they're trained power rangers they their zords are trains their design is trains it's the train sentai so a lot of people make fun of it for being the train sentai. you mean like chugga chugga choo choo uh, yes, those trains yes. those trains oh, oh okay that's weird well uh, go ahead go ahead uh, now, now I'm so, interested. Now I gotta know. <laughs> so, like, I think it was, like, the third or fourth episode of Tokyujer, where the pink ranger gets separated from the rest of the group. And she, like, has to, like... I don't remember the scene very well, because it was, like, five years ago. But... So, basically, the plot of the episode was that the pink ranger was, like, a coward. And she was coming to terms with that, and she couldn't do what she needed to do as a Tokyujer because she wasn't confident and then like she works through that as the episode goes on and like near the end of the episode she gets she like pep talks herself and it's this big moment and I legitimately cried and that's the only time a piece of media has ever made me cry oh it was just like a super inspirational scene that ended up yes. making uh, that ended up making you a uh, 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 cry. Well, okay, I understand that because I, I was I was hoping it wasn't something really weird. Like you know, it said, "Come on, train, come on, train, do the chugga chugga for me." Because I, <laughs> I was kind of in the train. The poor little train goes, choo, choo. and it fucking just it, it fucking like 
uh, struggles like a fucking retard would running through fucking mud to like you know fucking blow itself up as a final sacrifice to help the can we, the, the can Power we, Rangers. Uh, I thought I honestly <laughs> thought that that was gonna wa- go where you know like what well, like how you thought the Return of the Jedi was gonna go. That's how I thought your first act of that story and your conclusion was gonna go. <laughs> Hearing, hearing what Mo is saying, what Mo is interpreting this train Power Rangers as, it, it it was never adapted to a Power Rangers. I think we need to like all get together and make the train Power Rangers. Uh, <laughs> don't get Power Rangers. I like trains. <laughs> oh. You definitely need the I like trains guy in that song. I like trains. He's like, yay. Dead. The guy who voiced the I like trains guy is dead. Well, then, we'll, I guess we'll have to fucking do it then. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, he is dead. Oh, a- anyway. All right, all right, all right. So, now that we're done hearing you cry like a little bitch over trains. <laughs> yeah. What what is we're 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 at Hoth or no not Hoth though, we're at the forest moon of Endor. The the Rebel Alliance has just stumbled on there and uh what did you think of the forest scene? Because personally I thought when I was a kid it was kinda boring and it stops the movie dead in its fucking tracks for a little while. The scene with the Ewoks? But, well, like no no no, the the entire like I guess middle part of the movie is essentially them stopping the movie dead in its tracks and just spouting exposition, dialogue, you know, establishing lore and stuff like that for a good, like, 35, 45 minutes, maybe. And so then you get... The and, and, well, no, 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 no. This includes the Ewoks. Oh, and, and okay. Like, like that, that entire uh, uh, thing. Yeah, like, it's not well, very important. Yeah, it's it's not exceedingly important. Uh, honestly, you can probably like if you edit... cut out a lot of Endor, like, wouldn't be a big deal. Like... <laughs> yeah, it, it it would really wouldn't be that big a deal if like they cut most of the freaking Ewoks out. Even though as a kid, I, I really did enjoy them. And They're with adorable. My, yeah, well, with my nostalgia glasses on, like I I I I don't look at them with the same annoyance that I do Jar Jar Binks. Just because well, Jar Jar, oh, 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 we'll, we'll get to Jar Jar Binks. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I suppose I suppose I'm jumping uh, way too far uh, what far the ahead. Ewoks remind me of as a zoomer. I think I think it's the opposite that the, the this was inspired by the Ewoks, obviously, because this came out like 13 years later. But what the Ewoks remind me of is an, another another Power Rangers tangent. Larago from Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. That like weird furry wizard. Has anybody seen Turbo Power Rangers movie? I haven't. Nope. Robin, come on, you're my last hope. Have you seen Turbo Power Rangers not, not, movie? She, 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 oh, there we go. No, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so go ahead, Riley. Okay, so anyway, that's what the Ewoks reminded me of, but the Ewoks are definitely a lot better, and I like the Ewoks. I liked... Leia bonding with the little Ewok. I really liked the Ewoks. Now, the what... Re- oh, sorry, go ahead. That's the only reason I enjoyed that part of the movie, was because of the Ewoks. I love right. the Ewoks. Okay, so now that I'm thinking about it, we had the compare... Like, this is a contrast-compare sort of scene within the same movie. We had Luke, uh, early on in the movie, uh, show him using the dark side of the Force to uh to basically kill two two pig guards with uh you know, with, with the with, with the dark side of the force that he then uses the force again uh in, in the scene where he makes c3po float around like you know in, in order to intimidate and scare the ewoks into letting them go what do you think of, of those two scenes when they're put together do you think that one like that do you think that the the scene where he's uh making C-3PO float uh, float around. Do you think that's justified even though that he's manipulating the Ewoks and basically scaring for, them? Like, Do you think that's sort good... of dark-sided in nature? Yeah, or yeah, it, yeah. It... he's doing it for a good reason, but he was doing the Jar Jar Binks stuff for... Not the fucking Jar Jar. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, just, I just committed a horrible crime and mixed up Jabba the Hutt and Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> the Jabba the Hutt shit... He was also doing that for a justified reason, but he did a lot of dark shit, and I think this is the same type of thing. Like, 
Do you think I it really, came from? Do I you... think this movie would go from an eight out of ten to like a ten out of ten if they more explored Luke's descent into the dark side of the Force. I mean, do you do you think? All right, so now that we now that you uh, uh, have established that, do you think that sort of uh, solidifies? Uh, well, God, how am I supposed? To, how am I trying to put this up? Uh, you know how you see that, and you how you know how you see him choking out the guards and all that, and that comes from a dark sided place. Do you think that also sort of exacerbates his, uh, his uh, or not exacerbate? Do you think? Do you think that it? Uh... Oh, fuck. You know what? I, I I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to say. I'm like to totally drawing a blank here. Do you think him being man that manipulative, even though it's. He's doing it for a good reason, you know, to let him go. Do you think that sort of uh, makes him a little bit more dark-sided, too? Like, it sort of gives him yep. another notch toward the dark side, even though he's doing that. He's manipulating a quote-unquote inferior species by using the Force. Yep. I think it's another example of Luke. I... It seems weird to me that Han and Leia don't notice this, because, like, he's, vi he's like, visibly going to the dark side. But, like, nobody really notices, except, I guess, Emperor Palpatine, maybe. Well, the thing about that is, though, is that this is kind of, they, the Han and Leia kind of grew up where, uh, after, after the, uh, the, the Great Clone War, and after the purging of the Jedi with Order 66. So, they probably wouldn't have uh, been so privy to uh, what the dark side of the force would really I mean, look yeah, like other like, than Luke, you've changed you're more like cruel and less compassionate what the fuck is going well, on well I don't I don't think that he was it came from the even the choking of the guards and the levitating of the 3PO I, I don't think that it was really it really came from a place of cruelty I think it came from I a, guess, a, 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 like a hold, hold on hold on yeah, I, I think it's I, I think it's definitely a, a, a place of necessity, because he's just he they they've got to get let go, so yeah he's probably going to violate some some Jedi standards. I guess that's what I was trying to say earlier. Do you think it it, it probably violated a lot of quote unquote Jedi standards uh, for him? There to weren't use... really a lot of Jedi standards at that point. Like there wasn't like a you know, like well, the council was Yoda, right? Like. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, I was – sometimes in, in my mind, I think that uh, the the Force really is looking, you know, uh, down to him. And I'm thinking that maybe since the Force ghosts are a thing, uh, that maybe maybe you're not trying to disappoint your old master. And maybe, maybe it's just uh, – I, I don't know. Maybe go, uh, how, how far is too far and where is the line? I suppose is the whole point of those scenes. Anyway, we're at 137, so let, let's, let's get to the point. We're, we're pretty much at this point. Luke is uh, quote unquote captured uh, by the uh, by the Empire, and by captured, I mean he went in there and turned himself in. And of course, he know, they know for a fact that Vader would want to be notified immediately. What, what did you think about that little uh, back and forth between Vader and uh, uh, Luke? At that point where he captured him, and he's first starting to try to turn his father, Riley. It's a good interaction. That whole thing in general was really good. I, I really like that it sort of was like the reversal that, you know, the plan obviously of the bad guys was for Darth Vader to turn Luke, and then Luke turns Darth Vader. I really like that. I really like that whole thing. Good, good, good. Because I, I, you, you can sort of tell by uh, by the end of uh, episode two, or uh, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, by uh, episode four. What, what the fuck is it called? Three, four? Yeah, it is four. A at this point, no, it would be five. Fuck, I'm fucking dumb. Oh, we've been talking about this too long. I'm starting to get stupid. I'm starting. Which to one do you these. think is five? Uh, 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 Empire. Yeah, yeah, Empire. Okay. Yeah, 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 Empire. Shit. Yeah, by the by the end of Empire. You really do see uh, the little things start to add up and start to not make sense. Like, why would uh, Vader care if the the Empire, uh, the the uh, little uh, battalion that he had, what would he care if he, they 
if they put their if they set their phasers to stun and they peacefully took the cruiser and they're not trying to hurt anyone you know because he knows that luke is down so he knows that the rest of them are expendable but he he gives them that mercy of just being stunned so he can take them all alive and to not hurt luke so the, I, that was a really cool little subtle uh uh, uh, uh i guess a uh, uh, hint at uh, uh, vader starting to come back and started getting distracted from probably, the power of the dark side i more interpreted that probably retrospectively yeah that makes sense but i more interpreted that as like he's doing that to like make luke less animosity towards him so that he could eventually turn Oh, you think it's That's all? Ju you think it's all just a trick and a ruse to get him to calm yes. down and to drop and this his is the guard? The question I was gonna ask is, do you guys think that Vader's actions at the end make him a good person, or like, do you think he really changed or, or anything? I, I, think... I think he really changed. Like he redeemed himself. He obviously didn't. Did he? he obviously though? can't be completely forgiven, well, but he I, redeemed I, himself at the end. I, I think he did. Uh, he did redeem himself in some way. But he he's he'll never be truly forgiven, and quite frankly, his his sins and his crimes are quite unforgivable. I mean, he slaughters a fucking classroom of uh, of young links for God's sake. So yeah, it, it's we're never going to end up. He'll he'll he would never uh, live that down. So to fast forward to wrap this sort of up, um, we're at the final freaking scene of the of the movie. It, it's it's. All of the Empire versus all of the Rebel Alliance at this point. And they're they're gunning toward the second Death Star. The freaking base has been blown up. I don't care up. about the spaceship fights. I care about the lightsaber fight. The literal best How can, good lightsaber but that, fight. But that's like the second best part of the movie. Besides the light. How can you not like the the star, uh, the star Death Star being blown up? I like it. Being it's blown just up. overshadowed by the lightsaber fight. Oh, oh, okay, okay. You know what? I'll give you that. Because that is arguably the the slightly cooler part of, of that film, but I have to say the the gigantic uh, battle for the fate of all uh, happening up above space and, and watching the empire the, the emperor who uh, I, I never really thought that there would be anyone more evil than Darth Vader, but you know exactly uh, that isn't true when the emperor. Uh, steps off of his ship and he's like old and ragged and he talks like this like an evil man should or like an empire emperor would you know like you you can hear uh like the the evil dripping off of his voice and how he talks down to vader like right off the freaking bat like he's fucking nothing and so uh, uh, uh watching him you know just uh uh manipulate uh, manipulate a uh, luke into trying to strike him down because he knew exactly what was going to happen. The, emp the Emperor knew that he wasn't going to die that day. It was going to be him putting uh, him up it was going to be him putting Luke up against Vader and of course Vader would have died because he's you know he, he's just not as fast as he would because at this point no one's really sort of wants to talk about the fact that uh, uh, Darth Vader is freaking old because uh, he he's been he, he's been uh, alive for quite some time. I think he probably he might be in his fifties, or maybe uh, pushing as, as old as Obi Wan. As old as Obi Wan, yeah. So at, at that point, uh, the Emperor is going to look for a replacement because thanks to a st sort of established lore in Episode Three, where we think that might be happening, though we're never actually told. Uh, he he's probably going to find a way to live another hundred or so years so he's looking for you know vader's replacement his son who is far more powerful in the force than vader but the and the reason for that is another episode all by itself but <laughs> what <clears throat> sorry what do you think of uh, oh. uh how, what what do you think how or how do you uh um blah 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 blah, blah, blah. uh how, how did the 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 last uh few minutes of uh that lightsaber duel uh what, what how did that do it for you riley it was just fucking great the the choreography was actually good it felt like an agile and like 
interesting. It wasn't the, just them slowly um, tapping their swords together. Oh no, Mo. He's <laughs> gonna like the sequels. Well, the, all right. So, the, well, the choreography is arguably far better in, in, in the sequel. I mean, for crying out loud, the the first uh, the first little fight between Qui Gon Jinn and Darth Maul in the desert as oh. they're escaping is fucking cool. I I think. I I love Darth Maul's lightsaber. Oh yeah, like all the it, lightsaber. The lightsaber fights in the first two movies were just two guys like slowly loving their swords together. This one was actually good. Well, like really, it's it is also a story of a freaking of of a novice, uh, learning how to use the force because like you barely see a, a glimpse of uh, Luke's mastery of the force near the end of of the film. I mean, near the credits. I mean, when he sees uh, the force ghost of all of his masters and his dad, which is always going to be the the first guy who who. Who played Vader, and, and not fucking Anna, uh, the, the dude uh, Hayden P uh, Christensen? That that really pissed me off yeah, in, the, yeah. in the special editions when they, they 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 really fucked over the dude who physically played Vader. Like they fucked up on paying him, then they tried to write him out of the credits and uh, allegedly, and then they 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 replace him uh, at the end of the film with the Force Ghost stuff. And I thought that was really disrespectful and a poor form on Lucas's end. But speaking of the end, what did you think of the ending of uh, of uh, uh, Re Return of the Jedi, Riley? It was pretty good. It was a good ending. I liked it. You got, you got anything more for us, or? Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was a good ending, you know, like, yeah, everything, you know, some enemies became friends, some friends became enemies, and, you know, uh, yeah. It was, it was, it was the end of the trilogy. What else can I it was say? The it end, was the you end. know, yeah, the end, you know, hey, Force Ghost. <laughs> so come funny. on, come on, go in there, Force of God. Uh, you, you, come on, what, what, what did you think of, like, Obi-Wan and, and, and again, Yoda returning as Force Ghosts? That could be a very hard cool, cracking. And I liked how Anakin uh. joined them. Yeah, that was really cool. It was really good. Stuff that makes you feel good, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was cool. <laughs> well, I guess this podcast is just cool. <laughs> I guess everything's just a okay, rosy, upsy days. The mocast, the mocast, pretty cool. Uh, pretty fucking cool. I love it. <laughs> Gee cool golly podcast. darn. Gosh. Uh, well, hey, the, the originals, they ended. It was cool. Yeah, it was great. It was cool. It was great. Now, now we can get to the... About it. You, yeah. Ending. But, uh, come on, like, you, you, you've got to have, like, a little bit more than just that. Like, you know, know, like... It's a good ending. It's just good. I don't so, know. Well, I, I mean, no feel. How, how did you feel when you saw the entire, like, the expanded universe, like, rising up against the Empire? Like, you see, like, a, a, a Naboo... Not, not Naboo. Yeah, yeah, it is Naboo. I always confuse... Naboo for Alderaan for some reason or another because that's where uh, Leia's mom uh, Luke and Leia's mom comes from not where Leia herself comes from but you see the, the the universe rising up in celebration that the Empire is officially dead you even get to see some of the uprisings independent uprisings throughout the galaxy like I mean didn't you see that like did you feel nothing during those scenes I just felt Good. It was a good ending. I felt dandy. It <laughs> yeah, was cool. Exactly. Well, this has been the MoCast. We've just uh, <laughs> uh, we, we've talked about episodes four, five, and six. We're we're going to be doing one, two, and three here. Uh, do you guys want to go ahead and just do that next week? And uh, no, I think I think we should do this like every other episode. I think we should. Have yeah, I can't. I can't watch that fast. This gave me. Uh, all right, all right, all right, okay. We gotta do the PCP I, episode I, next time. I'm super hyped about that, Mo. You came to me with that stuff. idea, and I'm like, fuck yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, all right, so we'll we'll do PCP and all that next week then, and uh, uh, then we'll prepare to watch episode one, two, and three, and then we'll do another thing, and then we'll watch. <sighs> Uh, we'll, we'll watch the last, these latest three. 
What about the, uh, what about the Christmas special, Mo? We're not going to watch the Christmas special? Oh, God. Do no. we fucking have to watch the no. Christmas special? No, 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 no. Of course we do. <laughs> it's great. Are you trying to make me hang myself? <laughs> no, we're not watching the Christmas. We can watch. Okay, it's a little compromise. We can watch the John Tron video of the Christmas. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's all right. You know what? Fine. Yeah, I, I can do that. I I'll yeah. gladly do that. We'll watch the John Tron version of the Christmas special because that's far better than have to suffer through it. God, Carrie Fisher must have needed some fucking cocaine money for that one, man. She was she was doing it for some blow money. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that because then, at this point, the eighties are in like full swing. And she talks Thank about like doing. It... <laughs> hey, excuse me. Like you know, I would have, dude. I, all right, straight up, no shit. Like, if I ran into freaking uh, 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 Mark Hamill and all of them like during the '80s, and they're like, "Hey, Mo, come join us. Like, let's do some blow, dude." I would do line after line with Carrie Fisher. I would. She probably. Has been the cast. Find us next week. Uh... No, no, like, no, no, like, she probably would, like, out-party me and out-drink me, like, under the table. Like, she looks like one of those people that can, like, hold her freaking own and probably kick my ass at the, you know, at the same time. Like, I'm intimidated uh, by it. But, you know, she's also dead. So, you know, I'm never going to be able to find out if that's true or not. Anyway, this has been the MoCast. Thanks for coming out. I really appreciate it. And until next time, ta-ta.